hey, y'all, this is Lou Temple. You know me as Axel from The Walking Dead or Adam Banjo from The Devil's Rejects. And just letting you know that you are here with myself and Roger on Slasher Pepper podcast. Uh, we're going to have a good visit and uh, check me out in the new feature horror film Monstrous with Christina, Christina Ricci and uh, also Western uh, Murder at Yellowstone City, which is a, uh, a whodunit. So check us out and keep on uh, watching us here at Slasher Pepper and, uh, and your man Roger will get you where you want to be. Follow me. How are you? Roger, I'm great. It's, um, it's the summer of 2022, so I feel like maybe it's our first uh, honest summer out of the pandemic, so to speak. Right, uh, yeah. And, and so maybe we all have a little bit more freedom than, than we have in the last couple of years. Uh, the weather is very nice here in Los Angeles. I'm sure in Amsterdam, the summer is beautiful as well. So yes. I think we're all getting out and sharing um, with each other. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that continues, right? Yeah, for sure. Did you have any uh, plans for this summer? And maybe you were traveling anywhere? Well, uh, I was liking to think that maybe I was coming to Europe, but it didn't work out on a couple of projects that, um, or one in particular that did fall through. And uh, um, so currently I am just traveling around the States. I think I have a, uh, a couple of uh, fan conventions that I'll be going to and um and hopefully a couple of projects that I'll be on that'll, that'll take me around the States. Uh, you know, there's a lot to see here. So we do that. Um, uh, my wife and daughter are coming over though to, um, to England and uh, France. So they'll, they'll have a nice European holiday as you say. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And uh, can you tell us more about these uh, potential projects you might have going on? Oh, yeah. Well, um, there's a cool kind of an indie horror film that we're going to be doing called Father Reaper. And it's sort of uh, this priest uh, during the day. He he transitions into the Grim Reaper. Night. So during the day, he's, he's saying that uh, it's kind of a cool. Um, kind of a comedy action thriller a little bit like frighteners if you can remember oh, frighteners nice. with michael j F yeah yeah and uh with the grim reaper and so lots of special effects and maybe we'll do that with skeet ulrich and um and we'll 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 start that up in the fall uh there's a circus movie that i think i'm i'm attached to that's an independent film about a young lady who's really just trying to escape the circus, but every time she does, um, she gets pulled right back into it amongst all the strange characters that are part of the circus and the environment. And then she recognizes uh, she likes it for what she's always tried to leave. Uh, she realizes these people are her, her family. And- uh, Right, nice. And that movie's called Circus on the Run. And then developing a really cool H.P. Lovecraft. He's kind of the grandfather of science fiction. And um, uh, about his uh, um, story of Innsmouth, the short story of Innsmouth, which is the fish people, the people from under, underwater with the monster Cthulhu and kind of developing that as a television series uh, with some really cool, classy people. So hopefully we can, we can get that on the move pretty good and um, have a couple of Westerns. I have a Western out right now called Murder at Yellowstone City, which is kind of like a uh, whodunit in the West. It's sort of Agus, Agatha Christie meets uh, Sergio Leone. And... Oh, nice. uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of a suspense 
thriller to it. And uh, in this small town where everybody's a suspect. Uh, so, and, um, and then, you know, I don't know, I've, I'm, I'd like to get on since The Walking Dead, I'd like to get on another television show because uh, that's something that, you know, has a long life and you can go to work for, for quite a while and, and be satisfied. So I'm hoping uh, I audition for quite a bit of the television shows that are, are out and about and maybe they'll find a place for me. Hopefully. Yeah. Be nice. And so uh, for all these projects that you've been talking about, will you be acting or producing? Because I know you've kind of been wanting to move to the producing part too. Uh, yeah. And also yeah. potentially directing. So, yeah. Uh, well, so uh, most of them are, are attachment as an actor, but the television show, I'd be more active as a producer and executive producer. Um, you know, you're right. I think that I'd like to sort of, have a piece of ownership of more of the projects that I'm involved with. So if I go and do an independent movie, I'd like to at least um, have a, a voice in the decision-making process about how it's going along. And then there are two projects that I've written that I would like to direct. And that's just uh, at that point, it's about, finding somebody that's willing to back me, you know, financially right. to put the money up to, uh, to go out and make, uh, make these projects. So, yeah, I think I'm trying to kind of diversify. I think you have to, um, you know, if you look at successful people in the entertainment industry, they, they branch off. They don't just stick into one, right. Um, yeah. One segment, mostly you recognize they're out, building projects as well it's it's really about building it's just like the old lego set you know you you, you need more legos and you got so you can build bigger right and, uh, and so i i do want to build yeah that's awesome well i hope to see you uh build more movies then in the future yeah thanks roger i appreciate that i hope to i hope so as well awesome and uh, you mentioned the Frighteners, and I know R. Lee has a small role in that. And um, I just wanted to ask, what was it like working with him for your scenes in uh, oh, the text that's scene such, such, Yeah, he's such a great guy. Um, you know, he's passed now, so rest, rest his soul. Uh, he is, he's one of these guys that, you know, he has such this great voice and this great cadence of his voice and anything that he says is going to sound good you know what right. is your problem you know lou temple you're going to meet me and go fishing in marina del rey we'll be <laughs> uh leaving at 0800 hours you will bring the music both country and western and so um he was great he was just really fun to be around he was really genuine he was the real deal he really was a gunny sergeant he really was that character in full metal jacket he brought a um a man's man to every one of his roles like a real tough guy but a real honest guy he understood the values of hard work um from a a throwback time. And so I got to do, um, I got to do two movies with Lee. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, which he kind of takes my uh, identity. You know, yeah. after he, he shoots me, he takes the, puts on the, the uniform and becomes uh, Sheriff Hoyt. Um, but before that, it was Sheriff Winston, who I was riding out to go, uh, apprehend his nephew tommy uh we also did a movie called on the borderline which was about um bringing illegal aliens across the mexican border in the united states and i was on the wrong side of the law he was on the right side of the law and but he and i had a really good time we used to like smoking cigars together uh i just think he was really a special person that had fought in the Korean War and stayed over and done Vietnam. And then Oliver Stone had found him uh, making movies in uh, uh, Taiwan, in the Philippines, making these independent movies. Uh, 
as an American soldier. And so he kind of rescued him from that and, and got him into all the movies that we've seen him in from shoot full metal jacket to Mississippi burning to like seven. And then, and then he kind of ventured into comedy, which was a little bit like frighteners or toy story or, uh, I forget those movies where he was the gym teacher, but uh, he was really funny. He had a great sense of humor, really good guy. Um, he knew who he was. And I think that's really important to know who you are so that you do it well. Yeah. Right. I coincidentally actually watched the, uh, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake just this weekend. And I must be honest, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, when you think of that series, you think of Letterface. But yeah. in those movies, he steals the show for me because he is so funny. Like sometimes he do the most evil things or say the most nasty or evil things. But his line delivery and just the, the lines themselves are hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. He's really great at not um, uh, not making everything so serious or important and right. not being not being affected so he's he's not always monologuing or villainizing his yeah well this is just something we do out here you know right uh chop your head your hands off so um <laughs> so hope you're not wearing a watch you know let me get that yeah he he was he was a lot he was really a lot of fun and um uh, we got to spend this whole day in a car out in Austin, Texas. And the director wasn't really sure. Andrew wasn't really sure what he had, what he wanted from this scene. So he just let us uh, improv. And I was just running my mouth. I mean, I was just bad, 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 bad. He was, cause the, the point was, is to conceal him, to not really let you know who he was because the movie you had just seen oh, had already right. been, yeah. been out. So we were trying, because ev- all the audience would go, oh, we know exactly who he is and who he becomes. Uh, but this is how he becomes that guy. And and then we don't see him till he yells at me and says, Sheriff, we got a problem. And I turn around and say, what problem? And he's holding my shotgun and blows my head off. <laughs> right. And, and then, I know, and then it, it's like, oh, shit, it's that guy. Bad news. Right. right? And for the so the the audience will immediately connect. So I thought they were really smart doing it that way. And he was he was really great about not giving too much of himself up in conversation in that that scene, which was was kind of hard because I was saying some things that he probably just wanted to tell me to shut up. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but but I I got to be kind of friendly with him socially off the set and. We enjoyed uh, steaks and cigars, and and uh, I always liked uh, I always liked him. I was really sad that he passed. Yeah, I bet. Well, yeah, you seemed like a really nice guy too. Yeah, yeah, he and was steaks great. and cigars sound nice. So it was a. It's always good. Uh, there's a few guys, you know, you uh, you recognize the guys that might like doing that. Uh, one of the guys was um, Scott Wilson, who was Herschel on The Walking Dead. Uh, used to do that with him quite a bit as well. Uh, steaks and cigars. He uh, always enjoyed that. And then, um, and he's gone now too, sadly. So yeah. uh, I think it's important, or I've been very fortunate to be able to uh, have time with those types of of people before they leave us and right. and be able to uh, break bread as they say and be very social um and relaxed in their environments that they feel comfortable in to really get to know them yeah yeah that's and really you know cool. i suppose at some point i'll be that guy you know i'll be the old guy or maybe i already am that people are like hey you want to get a steak and a cigar yeah Let's go do that. Right. Um, so uh, it it's kind of the circle of life, I guess. Right. really is. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then what is it that what is it that you think it is that makes Rob Zombie cast you in so many different movies? 
Oh, uh, well, it, it, I've always felt like Rob and I connect on a, um, a level where we recognize each other's childhoods. So I think we, we kind of grew up in the, the, the same generation and we did the same things. And there, there weren't so many things in the world to distract. There weren't podcasts, for instance, or, uh, in, you know, social medias or even the internet, to be honest. So there were very few things. So the few things that we thought were cool, um, we could relate to. So I always felt like we, we connected on our, to a degree, our childhood, you know, um, I think he always appreciated sort of my authenticity in my work, you know, and a little of the brashness that I bring to characters or maybe, uh, the little big mouth that shows up with the guy that I have or the bravado, false bravado, or uh, the, the, the ability to give a character an arc. Um, I, think, I think he like, likes that to, to a certain extent. And then just the fact that I always brought something to the work. You know, I was always not just prepared to do the work, but I maybe brought a little extra and he appreciated that. It maybe took a little pressure off of him for trying to make something happen or make something work. And for the most part, the characters I've done for him, we've been able to get a little extra out of them than was on the page. And, and I, I know that um, he likes to hire people who, who he can count on to deliver and some so but to be honest and credit to rob he sort of started to even though he has his ensemble group and he has uh i like that he's branched out to use new people and he is uh he does use new people and and he kind of changes his uh, ensemble and that keeps him kind of fresh too right and i think um i think that's really healthy uh, not just for a director, but for us actors to work with new directors, and new, new storytellers. And that helps to, uh, you know, it helps to keep you relevant and, and get some new ideas. So he does yeah. that. I'm really excited for the Munsters. Yeah, me too. Uh, I just saw the trailer. It looks amazing. I think it's going to be great. I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Munsters but not near as big a fan of the monsters as Rob Zombie is. So right. I can promise you that he's going to take very good care of that, that story. And it's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm real excited for it too. I think he just announced actually that it's supposed to come out on Netflix. I'm not sure the date, but it will be coming out on Netflix at least. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's a great, that'll be a great release because there'll be, there'll be a lot of uh, a lot more visibility with right, it. you know, people yeah. see it more than if it just it, they had to wait for it to come to theaters. Yeah, Real it's exciting. great. Yeah, very exciting, and that's kind of a big release for him because typically his releases are they're not small, but they're not huge. You know, like they're not like the ten pole Marvel movies, right? Um, and so he 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 likes to keep things where he can control them, but Netflix will be that'll be huge. Yeah, that's, I, I saw that and I was honestly kind of surprised about it. Right. Yeah, that is, that is. But I'm really happy for him because that's, that's a great place. And so yeah. many people, so many people will see it because of that. Right. And uh, then I was curious if you've, uh, I mean, The Walking Dead has been going for so long now. And I'm just curious, have you been following up with the series ever since your character's uh yeah, pretty death. much. I mean, I don't, I'm not maybe somebody that drops in every Sunday, but for the most part, because we're out in the public so much and oftentimes we're invited to, to these conventions, it's good to know what's going on with the show and how it's evolved. And I bet. Um, also, you feel sort of like you're part of the family. So, yeah, I, I like to at least be moderately informed. Um, I don't stay up with the spinoffs too much or the, oh, yeah. 
you know, but, but, I but I appreciate them. And, and I hear that they're doing, you know, really well. And of course now they're building, we're planning on building even more. Um, I think it's interesting how the show kind of has changed with the times, even in the short time. I mean, yeah, 11 seasons is a long time. 12 seasons is a long time, but even the idea that, I feel like The Walking Dead at some point started to recognize we have to grow a younger audience the way Stranger Things does. So right. we should get some younger faces on the on the team. And they started to sort of transition into younger players. Um, I recognize that. Even the idea, you know, when I took um, the role on the show, the, the writing was really just built for Rick, the sheriff. And we all just sort of funneled our stories through him. But right. then shortly after that, let's say like, you know, by the time they got to Alexandria, there were a lot of stories and stories just kept being developed. And so I think the writers had a lot on their hands where before it was just like, how do we how do we filter this all into Andrew Lincoln's character? So yeah. I recognize that the shows had a lot of evolution. Um, and I, uh, you know, I think it's always been great work and everybody that's been on the show delivers and the storylines have been, uh, you know, for the most part, pretty interesting and, and, um, you know, enjoyable and suspenseful. And, uh, you know, they certainly have had their share of, uh, villains, um, you know, with the Negans and the Whispers. And then, of course, in my day, it was the governor. So uh, I think all of them have, have landed their, their characters quite well and, and been able to uh, give the, the audience what, what they need. And, uh, yeah, I'm proud to be part of it. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, it's really cool. Awesome. And uh, then here's a bit more of a random question. Uh, oh, what makes you smile? Besides, of course, beer and uh, or steak and uh, cigars. Steak and a cigar. Um, uh, the morning, uh, ev- the mornings make me smile. Like um, getting up, that I get to get up and see, go outside and see a blue sky and beautiful uh, garden, the trees. Um, uh, my daughter and my wife make me smile. Uh, and um, uh, nature, I think, makes me smile. Awesome. Sounds very peaceful. Yeah. I th- you know, I think that's um, at some point it changes like, um, you know, during your life different things would make you smile i'm sure as a child a toy makes you smile and then uh, maybe a pet or you know see waking up to your puppy uh, or make you smile and and then uh it probably just gets simpler and simpler the older you get because you recognize uh the joy and in a really great tree or a nice lake or beautiful blue sky or the ocean and so um those things uh those things make me smile uh i think i i appreciate other people's joy if there's something that makes i see somebody that is happy about something that makes me that makes me smile nice awesome and um obviously it's almost august so this is right in all the holiday season. Most people are going on vacation like Oof. now or not. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, don't go to don't go to Europe. I mean, I don't know about Amsterdam if all the restaurants are closed. But uh, last year I was in Italy making a film, and right in August, and uh, everybody was on holiday. All the Italians had gone out to the coast, and all the best <laughs> restaurants in in Rome were not open. Uh, so, uh, so. Yeah, you. It's holiday season for for most everybody. Yep. Right. So uh, I was wondering, what is your favorite holiday or traveling memory? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, 
you know, last year as a family, we went to New York City. Um, it still wasn't wide open because of the pandemic, but everybody was really happy to see anyone who came and visited. And so we had a really great trip to um, to New York, to the city, nice. and saw so much. And the weather was great. And the food was great. And getting around was really easy. It wasn't too crowded. So uh, one of my favorite cities is New Orleans, and I love going in May to the jazz festival, oh, cool. uh, which is a great music festival. And it's, it's uh, really well attended. There's a lot of people and it's, it's very warm. It's really, really hot the way it is in Europe right now. I think you're going through some high heat right now, yeah. or at least in England. And so it's like that. So it's just overwhelming. It's too much, but it's great because it's a huge festival of music and uh, people who love music and um, a lot of uh, uh, community, you know, it's, right. it's, uh, it, it, it's not as raucous as Mardi Gras, which would be akin to like carnival, but it's very similar. It's really hot. The weather's great. It's, it's a lot of fun. So uh, that's, that's a really great trip too. And then anytime to get to go to Europe and see, um, you know, a European country like France or Italy, um, uh, England is is good. I've uh, been to Germany several times. I, I really like being down on the Rhineland and, and uh, drinking beer and, and eating uh, sausage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've, you know, I have enjoyed Turkey very much. Uh, nice. So... Yeah, I think the European vacations are the best because it's just such a different and new experience. Awesome. That's really cool. You know, it's interesting, Roger, because we live in a country uh, here in the United States, which is so vast, so large that yeah. most people most people spend mo a lot of their time just exploring new parts of, of this country they right. have never seen. So yeah. th there's there's a lot to see just in the States. So sometimes people don't get over and, and see Europe as much as they they should, so to speak. Um, but yeah, even here in Los Angeles, sometimes we have this beautiful ocean and beach just um, not far from me. And a lot of people travel from all over the world just to see that ocean, you know? Yeah, exactly. Hard. Right. Yeah. So so I forget about that, you know, but um, every place is is got its own culture and community and something uh, to make it a vacation destination. And, and uh, uh, you can be on vacation anywhere, I suppose. So, but that's really? a great yeah. question. Yeah. That's a great question. Awesome. And uh, then final question, if your life was a movie, how would you want yes. it to end? Oh man. In a, in a, uh, in a to be continued, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would like, uh, I would like it to end with a message and the message would be, um, th that, that it's okay, that all of our fears and anxieties are to protect us, but that it's, it's going to be okay. And, um, don't don't let life be overwhelm you and let life be your friend and your adventure and if if my movie of my life could end with um with that message to carry on uh i i would be okay i always like movies that i get the message uh so the movie would be more about the message as opposed to the messenger right uh, it would be less about me and more about the message that my life taught me how's that that's really good that's awesome uh, oh cool Whew. thank you I pat. <laughs> <laughs> for sure you do <laughs> hey, thank All you right. so much for your time man roger it's been a pleasure on uh um to be here on slasher pepper and um and to be talking to the slasher pepper guru 
Um, <laughs> right on, Roger. I've enjoyed our visit. Thanks for having me here.